So. <laughs> oh, here we are. Here we are, Raising Our Resilience Parents. This is an exclusive in the group training. I'm not broadcasting this out on the public page because this is my very special five part motivation mastery model. And there's so much more I can give you than what I'll be able to fit into this 20 minute training. As a matter of fact, it's what I base my sessions on in my motivation mastery weekend that I'm doing in July. We're gonna spend three days on this model. But what I want you to know is that it's an acronym that you can remember. And I did that on purpose based off of Angela Murray's work. Um, she's a Montessori researcher, Carol Dweck's growth mindset research, um, and so much more. Angela Duckworks uh, research on resilience. There's so much kind of pulled together in this model. And what I want you to know is that if you can just remember, I care. You can think of how, it's, how that connects to motivation, right? Like if you care, then you'll do it. <laughs> or doing it shows you care, however you want, <laughs> want to think of it. Um, and what we're going to break down today are the five ways that, you know, proven ways that we can hack into our motivation scheme. Now, why do we need to know this as parents? Well, first of all, to motivate ourselves. So that, that thing that you really don't want to do, like you want, like learning how to handle a meltdown. Oh, sounds so hard. You mean I have to learn how to handle my emotions? I need to learn how to calm down. I need to change my morning routines. So I have less stress, you know, less, less um, intense stress response. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's, some, you know, for example, um, for, to motivate yourself, right? Um, to show up for a training, to show up for, um, you know, having that family meeting with your kids to go over the routine of the day. Um, all the different things that we know we should be doing, but we have a hard time doing and fitting in and staying motivated and juiced about. So it could be for you. But even more importantly, when you use these motivation hacks and you do them out loud and proud, you talk about it and say, you know, I wonder how we can make this more interesting, right? I wonder how we can make this more interesting. Or, you know, honestly, I think there's something here, some sort of skill that I don't feel very strong in that I need some support with. I need to learn something first. Um, like, for example, I just realized, you know, I haven't gardened in four years and, and I, I have this beautiful yard, this house that I bought many years ago with my family. And I, I've always been a gardener, but I was like, why am I not motivated to garden? And I realized it's because I don't know how to manage vegetable gardening with gophers. And it was just, finally, I went and did some research and you can get these things called gopher baskets. And I ordered some today and I'm like, now all of a sudden I feel this like, huge wave of like motivation and even sort of joy and love coming back into my my mind and my heart and my body um excited to to plant some vegetables this weekend um with gopher baskets <laughs> um so competence right like was there some underlying skill um another thing you could be you could be asking is is there is there a way to give everybody a little bit more influence a little more power a little more say a little more input um, and, and maybe even some choice and especially some responsibility and important roles so that, you know, we can feel like this, what we're doing actually, oh, you know what? Talking and spelling. There we go. Autonomy, <laughs> not autonomy. Um, and so that we can have that sense of autonomy or independence and like, you know, um, I can do this kind of feeling of like, I can do this myself and which kids crave, right? As they grow. Um, so that's another question. So could, could we make this more interesting? Is there some skill that I need to learn? Autonomy, right? Um, is there something that, um, some way that I could have more influence or independence here? More control, more power, more choice. Um, and then the, the, this one is called relatedness, which is basically relationships. Is there a way I could do this in a way that makes me feel more connected? Either by having good company while I'm doing this thing, like uh, another boost for me was that I, um, you know, have this prospective roommate who's really into gardening and I, and I had her in mind when I was buying all these gardening things thinking, well, I finally have someone to garden with because my previous roommate's not so interested. So again, relatedness, something like a relationship, someone that could be good company and or um, someone that you're going to impact that it's going to make a difference for. Yeah. Like recently I bought a whole 10 pack of Black Lives Matter signs um, and the ones that say like science is real and love is love. And it does reflect, happens to reflect my personal values. And I noticed that, <laughs> um, I noticed that, um, you know, one of the things that came to mind, and I was thinking about this training, 
one of the things that came to mind was, you know, I have a large, a large um, community of um, neighbors of African American and, and black identifying neighbors who walk by my house to go up the hill and get exercise. And I've noticed that, you know, there's a, a lot of people come, come from Richmond, they come from El Cerrito, from Albany, from all around, and they go up this hill and they seem to go up together. And I was like, wow, you know, what, of course, like I want to represent my own values and kind of communicate to my neighbors to like be loud and proud about my values and, and my solidarity and support as an ally. But then I also really had the people in mind who were going to be walking by and I thought about the impact of that and that did help me kind of push over that edge to not just buy one sign but to buy 10. And I'm going to go ask my neighbors whose houses these folks also my neighbor, you know, my, my stream of neighbors walking up this hill um, also also go by and ask them if they would be interested in, in making our block this like block of solidarity that they get to walk by when they get their exercise in. And so I thought of who I was impacting. And then the other example was who I might be having good company with. Another one is, is there, do I have a mistaken belief about um, whether or not an effort, okay, whether or not when I try and um, do this, I can actually um, with effort be, you know, learn how to do this or become better at it or learn to enjoy it, right? This task that's in front of me. Um, and Carol Dweck has this whole body of research called uh, on growth mindset. And so growth mindset is the belief that if you put effort in, then you're going to be able to grow your capacity, you're going to be able to improve, um, you know, you'll see any kind of setbacks or mistakes as and challenges as an opportunity to like change or learn from them. And so effort, E for effort, meaning do I, it's kind of a question, do I believe that I can make a difference or improve the situation with my efforts? And if not, why? And kind of challenge that belief that's holding you back. Yeah, possibly a fixed mindset around whether or not effort will make a difference. Um, if you're here with me, let me know. Say hi. We've got Cindy Watson here who's loving this topic. Thanks, Cindy. Um, if you're here, let us know you're here and where you're tuning in from. And which of these stands out to you? I have two questions. The first is, which of these do you think you already use quite a bit? Like, how do I make it more interesting? Or what's, you know, what's the underlying skill here that I need? Or um, how can I feel like more autonomous with this, more independent, more like um, sort of in charge or influential in this task? I mean, how, how many of you have been at a meeting, like a staff meeting or a team meeting or something, and the, the person who's in charge doesn't gather your input and makes a decision just unilaterally and doesn't have the community weigh in? And how motivating is that compared to having a roundtable discussion where they gather input and they actually take that input, synthesize it, and come back with something that is responsive to the group's input or influence, right? What a difference it makes. So autonomy, kind of went on a little segue there. Um, relatedness or effort. So which of these stands out to you as one that you already do? Go ahead and write it in the comments. Like, um, I think I already use and then put that one in competence, interest, autonomy, relatedness, relatedness or effort. Um, and, then, and then tell us about it, just a little sentence. Like, I think I already use interest by turning um, the you know, cleanup time into a game with my kids, right? Like I already use interest. Or maybe for yourself, like I make my chores more interesting by playing music, um, for example, okay? So tell us how you already use one of these. And then, I want you to think about, this is part two, I want you to think about which of these do you not use very much and you think could be interesting to explore. I want to know what that is, okay? Put it in the comments and let us know why. I think it'd be really interesting to check out this whole growth mindset thing. I've always said I'm a bad singer, but I do enjoy singing and I enjoy music and I think it would actually help me feel like, you know, I can express more and and not feel so tight in my throat or just generally feel more comfortable with like public speaking if I practice singing. But I have an, a fixed mindset about singing. I wonder what would happen if I put a little effort into learning just a little bit about like, I don't know, aperture of your mouth, like how to hold your mouth or how to use the breath. And maybe I could actually um, sing in a way that I enjoy hearing and others will too, <laughs> we could say, improve my ability in singing. That's what I want to check out. So go ahead and put it in the comments. Now, why am I having you do that? It's just so that you can interact with this model and start to kind of think about it more, you know, more specifically about your life and how you use it. And also, I want you to have the, the um, you know, have it in mind that 
if you're only rocking one of these, that may not be the key one for your child or children, okay? You might be coming at it like, hey, let's just make this more interesting. And the child has an underlying skill that they don't have or it's not broken down into enough steps and they put on the brakes and you're like, why isn't this working? For example, um, maybe you're building in choices, but they're so overwhelmed because they don't actually think, right, that that effort is going to work. So even though you're giving them choices of like, well, do you want to do you want to use the big brush or the little brush? But they have in their mind that like, I'm not good at art. That could be breaking it down. And you might be like, oh, man, no wonder. right? So I want to, just getting you giving you a chance to kind of explore the five the five motivation boosters and five sort of this filter that you can run things through. Okay. The other thing is just to familiarize you, you with us so that in general, in the moment, you have a lot of tools in your tool chest that you can pull from. Yeah. And so my dedication here in this space and raising our resilience parent group is to continue equipping you with strategies and tools. And, you know, it's so important to me because I believe that parents have like the most important and valuable job on the planet. I mean, raising a whole human being for their whole lifespan, like as long as you, you both are living. <laughs> um, and then, and, <laughs> and yet there's like, so there's this huge job and huge stakes outcome and yet not a lot of training to sort of prepare you for the areas in particular where, you know, it can be tough, like how to run a smooth routine, a robust routine, how to, um, you know, establish healthy boundaries, how to learn through conflict. Um, Motivation mastery, emotional mastery, which we focused on a lot this last month or two. Um, how to form a positive relationship, especially if there's some something kind of going sideways or sticky and wonky and an obstacle in the way. So all of these are, and you know, like in the last one of the seven pillars would be like getting on the same team. So you have really clear about what your shared goals and values are. You really have a sense of teamwork in a rhythm of working towards goals together and being in less like kind of pushing back power struggles and more sort of side by side moving forward together kind of dynamics. So if you enjoyed this, I just go ahead and let me know in the comments um, what you got out of this. What's your main takeaway? It always helps for other folks to also hear that so they can synthesize what they learned. It also gives me a sense of like what you're getting out of the, these trainings. Um, I have more of these trainings going on Mondays at 2 p.m. So come and join me. This is my weekly sort of gift to this group so that you can get more resources and tools and connect with each other. Um, and we'll be, we'll be announcing some summer contests um, later on in a few weeks. But until then, we'll just be back talking about more motivation mastery and kind of like looking at some of the specific questions that you've shared with me in your intake. So next week, we will check in about the five. Okay, see which one did you try? that you haven't tried before, okay? That'll be one thing. And then the other thing I'd love to do is go through the specific registration questions that folks have answered. And also I'll put up a post that says like, what are your top burning questions right now about the seven pillars? And I'll put the seven pillars up. And that way I can get some real talk with real parents right here um, in our group live. And I'll put a Zoom link for that one next week so you can join me and we'll have a time, okay? All right. All right, well, lots of love and support to you. I, I see you, I hear you, I believe in you. You can totally do this, this parenting thing, and you don't have to do it alone. You can village up right here <laughs> and get, to, get those resources you need so you can be the resilient parent that your child needs to be a resilient child. All right, lots of love to you. See you next week.